And I've been in rentals of a lot of landlords in my town. I know who the slumlords are. And I, you know, they do sign off on my tenant application. If you lie to Brandon, <laughs> not only are you not a tenant this time, you're not going to be a tenant ever. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the Ask James Wise Show here on Holton Wise TV. This show is all about education, nothing to sell you here. You guys have questions about real estate, and I am here to help provide those answers. Uh, the particular show I want to do for you guys today. I was actually filming with Brandon from Investment Joy. It's another YouTube channel. If you haven't heard of it, check that out. I got a link to it in the show notes. Brandon is a uh, big time landlord, entrepreneur. He owns several businesses. And him and I were filming a few episodes of the Tenants from Hell show. I'm going to put those in the show notes below as well. Uh, pretty wild stories out of Brandon. One of those, we did a story on a meth lab that Brandon had. In addition, we also did a story on a heroin dealer that Brandon evicted from one of his properties. And uh, during the course of the interviews uh, where I was talking to Brandon, him and I just, you know, we just ended up talking shop about a lot of things, about the business in general. Brandon's an open book, just like I am. You get the guy going on real estate and, you know, he can go on for hours and hours just talking about the business. So at one point, that's what him and I were doing. And we were talking about tenant screening and non-negotiables. And a lot of cool stuff came out from that conversation that I think is going to answer a lot of questions some of you folks have about tenant screening. Let's take a look at the footage. It seems to me that your screening process is very much based upon gut, right? And you do obviously do some things. You spoke about it in the last video, guys, the last video with Brandon's meth lab that's in the show notes for you guys to check out as well. And of course, check out all his videos on investment joy. I mean, if you guys are looking, Brandon is probably the only place on the internet, except for maybe the Shea show that has more it, as bad, if not worse, shocking tenant content than we do here on the tenants from hell show. So check yeah. him out on investment joy. But in that you, you know, you explained how you just sit down with people one-on-one -on -one and you really just talk to them one-on-one -on -one and, more or less, it seems like you'll rent to most anybody if they're willing to pay X amount of dollars to, to cover I, your risk. I, um, I have offered that. but Well, here's the caveat on that. I've offered that to a lot of people, and um, no one's taken me up on it. Right. That so what, I guess that's my question. Like, do you do that? Like, you know, full, like, would you be surprised if, A, someone ever took you up on that? And a follow-up question to that, Brandon, is – what are your non-negotiables? Like what, you know, there's a lot of tenants, like for instance, we will not rent to violent felons here at Holton Wise and we will never rent to anyone who's ever been evicted. I don't care if it's 25 years ago, it's an automatic no from us. What, do you have non-negotiables? Um, no, not really. And the reason that I have non, don't have any non-negotiables is I look to states like California, um, I look to Chicago, I look to Seattle and I, I ask myself, am I Seattle proof? to where they essentially have banned non-negotiables. And I'm trying to build a business format to where I'm already future compliant. So I try and quantify risk. But I, on my tenant screening, I do have a tenant screening process and my eviction rate right now, I would consider pretty low. Um, but I do a tiering process anymore. And if somebody's at the bottom of the barrel and I go through everybody else's denied my offer or they they don't want to rent it it's for one reason or another or my offer's too low you know i might get down to the bottom of the barrel and say hey you know you're, you're gonna have to pay me 15k um but as far as actually you know my quantifiable concerns or issues um i'm very job driven um if you we, we want to talk about that i'm very like to me right now as it stands my number one qualifier for a tenant is job history um, cause I found this really interesting tie. If someone can't stay with a job, they also cannot stay with a landlord or maintain housing. That's mostly stable. Um, that's kind of like one of my biggest qualifiers out there right now. Um, so essentially I do have holdoffs and I tell people, Hey, you've been on the job six months. I'm happy you just started working at McDonald's, but it's a huge risk for me to rent to you cause you have no job history. Can you do me a favor and potentially come back to me in, um, a year and a half. <laughs> no, that's so. that's great. It's I mean, you're laughing about it, but that, hey, guys, th those are those are golden tips right there, folks. Uh, he says it, you know, a little tongue in cheek, but those right there, folks, those are golden 
tips if you're trying to maintain profitability as a landlord? Anything else you do? That uh, number one is a job history. I require a really nice um, pay stub. I'm, I'm also to the point I, oh, I've, I'm, I've got a pretty solid vetting process for 1099 people and people that are doing subcontract work and stuff like that. I won't accept any cash employees. I'm, I've never had a cash employee work out um, other than one. Her name's Emily, who I really like. <laughs> she's great. Um, she's the only cash employee that I've ever had success with. Um, everybody else has been an abject failure, um, being a mostly cash tipped employee, that type of situation. So I want to see W2 income. I want to see a long time on the job. The longer the time, the better. Um, number two, I don't like seeing people landlord hop. That um, is a big red flag to me saying there's something going on here. If I see that you rent it off a landlord for three months and I know that landlord and they're pretty good. They don't, you know, everybody, the first thing they throw out when they say, I would live there for three months, the first thing they throw out was, well, there was some slumlord. And I've been in rentals of a lot of landlords in my town. I know who the slumlords are or the so-called slumlords are. And I know the landlords that keep a really nice property. They're great. They, they're very safe, good rentals. So if someone has been in a rental for three months, there's a problem. Um, so if I look at, I look at um, verified residential history, I also cross-reference um, records, and if I see that, hey, um, I could I could quantify that they've lived in Mr. So-and-so's rental for three months, but they did not put it on their rental application. They say that they actually were living with their mom. Um, then I say, hey, you know, you lied on the application. Why'd you lie? Well, I didn't like that house. Well, you know, I get okay, I guess, I guess. I will take it back. I, the, my one red flag is if you did lie on the application, I will turn it down. So that's um, it. That's a non-negotiable for you. A non-negotiable thing. Yeah, if someone lies on the application, I'll turn it down. But I, I'm at, you're making me. I, can you guys see the steam coming out of my my ears? Because I'm having to actually think during this interview. I guess that would be the one negotiable thing that I can't quantify for risk because. And I, you know, they do sign off on my tenant application. If you lie to Brandon, not only are you not a tenant this time, you're not going to be a tenant ever. What about evictions? What is your thoughts on, on previous evictions? What do you weigh when you're I, weighing a tenant who's had an eviction? Minimum five-year hold off. Um, I tell people that I try and quantify the risk, but my risk profile for a recent eviction goes up every single month, I think. Um, so now we're talking tens of thousands of dollars that they'd have to pay me to um, rent a place off me if they've been recently evicted. My personal thing right now is I want to see five years since their last eviction. And I want to see them with some other landlord that I know, or I can certify that they've lived in a recent property for about three years. If I see that they've, it's been a minimum five years since eviction and that they've had stable housing for at least three of the five years since then, then I feel like the risk is quantified to be significantly less because some, they went and they rented off another landlord and they were stable there. Um, I also am requiring any more um, receipts from prior, prior landlords and cell phone technology is just so wonderful anymore. I, I tell them, hey, you've got this great access to this wonderful technology because you've used a cell phone <laughs> to file, you know, you filled out an application somehow. Um, you need to take that wonderful piece of technology called a cell phone and take a picture of some of your recent rental um, receipts. So I want to see that you're paying on time and you're with your current landlord and they have to be dated the dates they're supposed to be. I don't want you to go to your landlord right now and say, Hey, go write me out a bunch of receipts. Um, Cause I know your landlord writes receipts. Um, Cause most, all the landlords I know do issue receipts to their tenants. And so, you know, you're kind you're kind of skipping ahead and you're, uh, you're answering all their questions or complaints before they even come up. So then, you know, you get into the risk mitigation, tenant qualification type situation where you're asking them these questions and you've already got the answer, the screening questions kind of pre-planned out. Well, if they say this, if this is their response, they can't find the, uh, the, the, the receipt, then we know there's something screwy on there. You know, that that's in a different risk pool, Brandon. 
Special thanks to Brandon for coming on the show again. Always love having Brandon here on Holton Wise TV. Again, if you guys are interested in hearing more about his story, in the show notes below, I've got the links to the two shows he did here on Holton Wise TV, as well as a link to his YouTube channel, Investment Joy. In addition to that, I want to I wanna know how you guys are doing your business. How are you handling tenant screening? Are you like Holton Wise, where you have a specific non-negotiable criteria and you do not deviate from that policy? policy anytime or are you more like Brandon where you will work with individual tenants and create an individual policy for every single situation let me know in the comments below I'd love to hear from you as always I'm James Wise with Holton Wise and this is real estate investing made easy Once you've placed a tenant, there's no need to make trips to the bank anymore because with Rent Tech Direct, you can now accept rent payments via ACH. This automatically transfers money from your tenant's bank account directly to yours, using the same technology that banks do to collect auto and mortgage payments. Your tenants can even log in and make payments with their web browser or their phone. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry. Certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year, you get unlimited free access to our U.S.-based support team by phone, email, and chat, who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.